Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover five reasons why being pig-headed is a good thing. Now, I want you to know spouses don't get to comment on this. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie is still here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and today I'm like, covering five reasons why being pig-headed is a good thing. I, I, I can't use the word pig-headed enough. It's a, uh, it's pretty awesome. So this, I forget you and I were talking about something, and I think, I think maybe you said pig-headed. I don't remember which one of us did, but I'm like, you know, that that's actually it. You know, there's some really good reasons why this is a good thing. Uh, the first one that comes to mind are. Some things just have a really steep learning curve, right? And if you're not very determined and stick with something, you won't learn it. And it just, you, it takes a while to learn. Like, let's say classes are not a hotkey. It's not something you pick up unless you've been programmed for a long time. Very quickly, it takes a little bit of time, but in the long run, they're worth it. Learning curves are, in general, something to take um, into consideration, of course, because we have both been big on people using calm in our hotkey and we know it has a learning curve and we got through it and we're pretty sure that most people can if they just stick to it and and our second point here leans towards that because we have seen that most people or at least a lot of people give up right away so learn to focus not give up those are great character builders right it's it's something you'd absolutely need in something like coding or programming in general there will always be some things that are either outside of your uh, current knowledge scope and you would need to actually be able to focus to pick it up that's for sure it's actually when, when i'll do interviews it's one of the things that I tell people it's my, my, my best skill, you know, my best trait is I don't give up. You know, when I put my mind to something, I'll solve it. It, it. it may take a long time, but I just, you know, and I'll still get the job. You know, I might not automate the entire thing or do whatever the whole way the first time, but I come back to it. And I, you know, I'm like, when I get, I'm very determined person. That's, that's the one thing I, I can't give up. It's not in my nature, but yeah, I think it's a great character trait. And the other one, though, that comes with this, and this, uh, unfortunately for most people, <laughs> well, no, I shouldn't say this. The problem is if you've never actually tried something really, really hard and actually achieved it, you don't realize how good it feels when you finally, you know, crack that thing that you were trying to learn so hard, right? But boy, when you do, the, the harder it is, the, the better the feeling, the endorphin rush or whatever you want to call it, like that you, you know, the sense of accomplishment that you get because you stuck with it, right? And it's, even at times where you might go too far and, and keep working on something where it's beyond you know the initial requirement, but when you finish it, it's just such a great feeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it, it correlates into so many things in life, right? It's, uh, if you try to run a marathon or if you want to run a quick sprint uh, in a specific amount of time or if you want to climb a mountain or stuff like that, and people keep putting the bar higher for themselves they might start with a simple mountain and end with mount everest or k2 maybe keep building on that and they keep having focus and they like that and if they didn't get that reward when they accomplished that goal they probably wouldn't keep um, forcing themselves well so, and, and to your point jackie to follow up on that the point you're making there was a it was still on our main point, but it's also on setting goals and achieving your goals, right? And and I'll tell you what, and it's one of the things why so many people die when they retire. They no longer have goals. And if you don't have goals, your sense of accomplishment and sense of purpose just fade away, right? So I, I think it's all related together there. And, and setting high goals is a great thing and going after them and keeping after it. It's It keeps you driven. It gets you wanting to wake up and get you to do something. You know, this is awesome. Yeah, I remember a, people, a motivational speaker or at least it was a motivational quote, I might say. I think it was a military general or something along those lines who, is, who said, every morning when you, when you get up, make your bed. Because then you have 
accomplished your first goal of the day. Yeah. You've actually accomplished something so, as the first thing you did today. So that will set the rest of your day up for success because you're already on a path of actually accomplishing things. So I, I just love that one because it's such a simple, small thing. Take your bed spread and yeah, exactly. Make the bed and it's how it's a simple thing. I'd say the fourth one we have here, employers want, want to hire problem solvers. It, it, I think this one is one we can be most certain of in the times to come, right? It's more difficult to solve. The more difficult problems you can solve, the more you'll be worth or the more you can earn or the more um, interesting you will be to an employee or employer um, is the right term. Because the more AI can help us, the more things that can be automated and so on and so forth. It is the problem solvers in the office or whatever field you're in that's going to be um, in high demand. Yeah, it's, I always... not the biggest or whatever. Yeah. I always enjoyed, especially at TI, amongst my group of... I was in a very technical group, right? Like we were the database and segmentation team for e email marketing and online everything. And my team wasn't, other than one person, wasn't very technical. So when there was something really hairy going on, I was like the go-to guy, me or that other guy. And, and it was a great feeling, right? But to your point, you can earn a lot more or just have a lot more clout and feel good about your job security, right? If you are that go-to to problem solve, to figure out what's going wrong and how to fix it or how to, when there's new goals that you want to, someone wants to achieve and figure out how to do them, right? To be in that, that role and to have the ability to do it, right? And, and, and I've talked about this. We had a, I don't know if it was in the podcast, but I've done a video on it. Like one of my things to do is to set my goal and then take a quick nap. And often in my sleep, I'll actually, my subconscious is working on it and I'll solve the thing, right? So, but being able to solve problems is critical in today's world. I, I love your point about AI is coming, right? And the more mundane tasks are getting automated, which is of course what we do. You need to be able to solve problems. Uh, and the last uh, one, sorry, did you have to tell us? No, I, I'm, I'm just totally in agreement with you. Yeah. And the last one is just a simple, hey, you know, nothing good comes easy. I think it gets back to that other point of the harder the task it is, the, the better it feels when you accomplish it. And simple things just don't give you that kind of reward, even though, which actually I understand your point about the bed earlier. It's like a momentum kind of thing, though, right? You get one thing, you accomplish it, and you keep the ball rolling going forwards. Now, the other side is I've heard Tony, is it Tony? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, expert on you know, done, eat that frog and it's do the hardest thing first because if you actually accomplish the hardest thing first in the day the rest of the day is easy right everything else is easy after that get the hardest thing out of the way first and then it's easy peasy from there on yeah and i think both of them can can be applied sure enough get something done as soon as you've gotten something done go eat that frog yeah absolutely because now you're on a roll right Get it out of the way, and as you said yourself, it's it's one of the big ones. That one frog there that you can't really you don't know which way to get it down, and it will stop you from getting anything done. Right? It, it's just like until I've got you. You might be dabbling at some of the all other small issues, but it will keep being there, meeting yeah. that frog. So yeah, I totally get that analogy. It, it's a great one. But it's a good point also, Jackie, that you're getting, you were alluding to is we were talking about earlier, like, I will make sure when I have a goal, I achieve it. You know, that doesn't mean I don't do anything else until I achieve it, right? We're not saying only focus on that one thing, because usually you have other things you still got to get done in the meantime, right? It's make sure you keep, it's like the eating an elephant, right? Take one bite at a time, divvy a big project up break it down, find ways to do the stuff to, to be able to tackle that big project. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see, we mentioned pigs, frogs, elephants. What else? I think I think we got the, the zoo covered for the day. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, there's a great, great <laughs> amount of animals. But yeah, there's a. But oh. I do love it, and pig-headed is a great word, Joe. Right? Yeah. It it just is. Remember, so to tell your boss you're pig-headed and you're proud. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Jackie. Yeah, bye. We love reading your comments, that's for sure. So let us hear what you think. We love those likes and please do share.